Okay, now we're going to look at a market graph, just really looking at and interpreting what some of this means after you have a shift, um, particularly looking at the concepts of shortage versus a surplus. Okay, when do you have too little of something and how can you know and when do you have too much of something? Okay, you've been with me for quite a while now and hopefully I'm not boring you. Let's see, as much as perhaps Shiloh is. Hopefully you're not snoozing quite as much as she is as you're watching this. All right, so let's take a look at this market. So our scenario is a blizzard hits, blizzard hits Georgia, market for rock salt. Okay, so we have our original demand curve and our supply curve. Okay, this, because this happens, we have an increased number of buyers. Okay, more people are going to be demanding this because they are in need of it more than they normally are because a blizzard is hitting Georgia that doesn't normally happen. Or you could talk about taste and preferences because they need it at this point in time. D2. Okay, it shifts to the right. Alright, so what we're going to look at here is at this price, which was our equilibrium price before. Okay, price equilibrium. And at that price, if it stays at that price, what is it going to cause? In other words, why do we really, why does our market actually move to this price? What makes our price stay here? And there are some times that this might take a little bit of time. Prices on, in many markets are naturally what we call sticky or inflexible. They don't move right away. But what makes them, what makes the market actually react to raise the price for this rock salt in Georgia? Actually, pretty quickly. Okay, if you look at it, this price, okay, you have, this is your quantity. If you look at your supply curve, this would be at that price, this is what they are willing to supply. Okay, at this price now, because this is our new demand curve, this is where we're actually demanding it now that the blizzard is hit, this is our quantity demanded. Okay, again, notice we're looking at this supply curve because nothing has changed to say what people are willing and able to supply it for. They don't have any better technology to get rock salt. They don't have any more sellers necessarily. They don't have um, an input that's all of a sudden easier to get rock, rock salt. So nothing has changed to shift the supply curve. Okay, demand has only increased. So at this price, suppliers are willing and able to supply this many. So that's what that quantity supplied represents. But now our demand at that price is much higher. So notice that this space, the difference between quantity supplied and quantity demand, okay, the more is being demanded than supplied. So because of this difference, the, the difference between quantity D minus quantity S, quantity demanded minus quantity supplied, is going to actually equal the amount of the shortage. Okay, the amount of that shortage then will force and say that people are willing to pay a higher price. So this will move the price to here and suppliers will move along the curve to this higher price. Okay, so the new price Will eventually shift to here. So again, when a price is below the new equilibrium, you know that your demand is higher than your supply. Okay. If we look at another example down here, recession hits the U.S. market and the market for cars. So you have your price and your quantity of cars. You've got your demand curve and your supply curve. Okay, recession hits, that's going to affect the level of income in the United States. Overall, the cars are a normal good, so people buy more cars when their income rises. And so, in turn, when their income falls, they demand less at every price. So, demand curve shifts to the left. Okay, so at this price, which is where the price was before, what makes it actually move down as we see that it's going to? So why is it that it does that? Okay, 
before, here is your supply curve. Again, it was your equilibrium. It's the amount that was being supplied and demanded in the previous market. Now at that price, if our price doesn't move to this new equilibrium, if the price stays the same, then our quantity demanded is much less. Okay, Quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded in this example. When quantity supplied is greater, then this difference is a surplus. There is left over. Okay? You can also call the distance between this point and this point, or the distance between this point and this point. Notice that is the same distance. This is a rectangle. Okay? So when your quantity supplied is greater than your quantity demanded, you have a, you have a surplus. And this forces the suppliers to lower their price and reduce the number that they are supplying. So the new equilibrium price will go to here. Okay, so again, this would be a surplus. And the previous example, a shortage. All this is doing is trying to show you the relationship of how the market actually works, what makes the price actually move. Okay, and a key thing there is that there's an initial feeling of a shortage or a surplus, and then the market reacts. And whether it be the suppliers that react or the, or the buyers, usually being a combination of both. They're both going to change, and the price will fluctuate in order to meet that equilibrium, that new equilibrium that's been established. Um, this does not necessarily happen instantaneously, but we do call it um, occurring in the short run.